Hey folks, I am back with another video. I uh, was amazed by the fact that uh, people were uh, interested in uh, seeing my programming and mumbling to myself video for half an hour, or hour and a half actually, and uh, I thought uh, I might keep it up or make make uh, a few more at least. Well, at the very least I want to finish what I set out to do in the other video, um, which is to finish the text in Cortex Command, where uh, people in the metagame can actually, players in the metagame can select their uh, uh, technology affiliation, so they, they have a certain technology, and I didn't actually do that at all. That's what I s said I was going to finish in the first video, and then it ended up being just a much smaller piece of that puzzle, which is the collapsing and making larger of, of um, technologies in the uh, buy menu. But uh, I wanted to actually make the entire thing work where you select things. So I will, once again, just fire up the game and show what I mean. And it, I usually do this when I'm programming anyway. I just uh, run the game and kind of look at it and play with the things. And then I, I get inspired to like, okay, this is what I need to, not only inspired, but I get, I kind of, get a clear picture in my head of what I want to do instead of just staring at the code and like not really getting a focused sense of what I want uh, so yeah this is what we're doing today for real uh, just populating this list with the available technologies and as with everything else in the game we're not just gonna hard code in like okay there's one thing and then there's you know like the coalition and there's the dummy and whatever that will not get hard coded in the in the in the C plus plus code. It it'll be loaded dynamically from the data, meaning the the modules that are loaded when the game starts. So somehow this needs to populate. It needs to grab you know the coalition string and like get it in here when in, when it's found a coalition uh, kind of data module like here like coalition. Here's the the game directory and it's you know the coalition.rt. So in here there's an INI file that says module name coalition tech. And uh, <clears throat> the problem here is that a module doesn't necessarily have to encapsulate a tech. It can be like all kinds of stuff. It can be it can be just a metagame save dump, and it has you know, metagame saves and stuff in here instead, and, and that's what it's called. It's called metagame saves, this data module, and that is not a tech. It's not something you can pick in the metagame, like, oh, I want to be a metagame save. That doesn't make any sense at all. So I uh, need to differentiate somehow, and I thought about this a little bit, and I think I'm just going to do a simple, kind of simple, it's, yeah, I mean, call it what you want, but I'm just going to look for tech in the module name, and if tech is in there, then it's supposed to be a technology that the player can choose and kind of be stuck with. So coalition tech is going to be one of them. It's just going to look for this string uh, or tech in the module name. And when it sees that, it'll it'll populate this is with just coalition. It won't say coalition tech because there's already technology above here and it's space is limited here. So I'm just going to go coalition, dummy, and whatever else. So and whatever other mods, you know, like, so that that's the whole point of doing the data-driven thing is that instead of just hard coding in a, a static list of things here, we're going to have the ability to just put in a new mod that, you know, anyone wrote and have the game load it and it'll pop up in here as, you know, the, the whatever mod tech and... Uh, it could be something that a player can select here and, and have, you know, play with in, in, in the campaign. That'll make the game a lot more replayable, I think, and, and uh, more fun, and, you know, like, the mods are gonna be a part of the, the campaign, which is important, I think. So, that's the plan, and uh, once the player selects things, uh, you know, what tech in here, it needs to propagate to, you know, it needs to affect them in the actual game. So I'm tr I'm going to hope to fix that, you know, get that role in today as well. We'll see if I actually get there. I'm, I'm going to try to keep these videos down to around an hour 
at most. An hour and a half is a little long, I think. But who knows? I mean, it's and there's no limit on YouTube, so apparently, so it, it worked out. But I'm gonna try to keep it around an hour. And uh, I might. I'm also gonna experiment with not talking as much. I mean, I'm gonna still have the kind of little stream of consciousness mutterings going on, but I won't like try to explain quite as much, which I am already failing to adhere to right now. But I'm explaining a lot. But. Uh, that's the plan anyway, so let's get started. But first I need to see what a friend of mine is uh, messaging me right now. Uh, oh, it's Miroslav. It's actually the, um, it's Miro in Slovakia talking about the K vehicle engine. So let me respond to him real quick and I will be right back. All right, back. Uh, anyway, I am gonna get started. So. What we need to look at is first the uh, metagame GUI, which is all this stuff. Oh, I closed the game. I that all the stuff that we were noodling around in the menus uh, that actually have you know anything to do with the metagame. So, meta player, and now I'm going to go into the mode of not talking as much because I need to actually focus on programming. So, <laughs> nothing's going to get done. Uh, I will still mutter to myself and maybe it'll still be interesting to look at this video, but won't be quite as much talking. So let's see where we're at. Mm. Buy menu GUI. So uh, <clears throat> I did since the last video I did transfer all that functionality of you know opening and closing module items in the in the buy menu into the picker menu as well. Which is when you're building the base. Uh, it, it does, you can do that stuff there too now. <laughs> That's not where I want to be. It's over at player line funds. No. It's actually. Yeah. So there's some default values that get set. Like there's the two players in the beginning. When when the player menu or the new game menu opens up, there's these two humans, and there's nothing else like playing. So it kind of assumes that you're going to be playing as two humans, or two humans playing against each other. But eventually I'll uncomment this back because m normally I think people are going to be playing against the AI. <coughs> it's more unusual that you have a friend at the computer, unfortunately, because that's where the multiplayer is at in Critics Command. The best play to give play this game is really with, with four game, con game pads in a sofa with a large TV, you know, a large screen TV. It's really fun. Like with split screen. I'll, I'll be grabbing some videos of, of play testing sessions with that in the future, but it's going to be really fun with the metagame, I think. Human, human, AI. <laughs> Here we need to do the actual... Hmm. Load the... Or populate the... The... Combo boxes. Okay. So I get all the modules. I wonder. Which module? Which 
module. Mm -hmm. It's just a vector. So I guess I just need to go through them. This somewhat get get a way to iterate this uh, list of data modules, but instead of just getting the actual vector from preset man, I'm just gonna use these indexing regular iterator. Eh. Whatever. <laughs> See, I'm not even gonna try to make this look you know in intelligible. I'm just gonna be muttering big time. Data module. Looking for that text string. So I need to find the text string and then I need to strip the text string so I can actually use it in that menu. I just don't want it to say tech after everything. We have limited space in there, so. Uh, how do I do that? Can we bust out the um, documentation. STL documentation. Come on, bitch. <laughs> mm. 
I'm sleepy today. I'm always sleepy, by the way. That's why I stand up and program, because I literally fall asleep in my chair, otherwise. Uh, strings, come on. Basic string. Searches. Okay, cool, cool. What do I get back? Gotta love my neighbor's dog. Barks a lot. I'm not a dog person. Well, this is what I want, but what the hell does it return? It returns size type, which is the position of that string, I guess. So it's not found. I get that. Maybe I can go. What is the size type? BS anyway. Sign it. If it's not that, then we have the position of it too. So tech pause is going to be. How do I get rid of the... Can I split? Is there a split or something like that? I always forget everything in here, so I have to look it up over and over again. Assign, replace. Replace, maybe? Replace with nothing? Could be it. Basics. Jesus, it's a lot of craziness going on. I think replaces it. So
I'm whistling. That's good stuff. Placing. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's like 12 overloaded functions for this. Sweet. Off. Offset. Well, no. Okay. <laughs> so it's going to be. Huh? Actually, I want to find space tech. Because otherwise, it could be wacky if we have, like, some name that. Yeah. Place. S position. Position. The length. Tech is. Replace it with nothing. So we're cutting out tech. Excellent. Tech position. Not useful anymore. So okay. Now we have the new tech name. That's what we're adding to the to the tech select. Here we go. Combo box. Play it by team. Team select. Tech select. Okay, good. All of these actually I need. Well, let's do one at a time. Set get list panel get add item. Yeah. See now we're back to our list items that it's the same widget. It's actually a sub widget of the uh, uh, the combo box, the thing that the the list that I think the list that drops down is the same as in the menu. Uh, the buy menu, even though that's not a combo box, it's a list, but it's the same list widget that is used here. So I'm adding an item, and we see we have this is going to be the tech name, and nothing there. No bitmap, no entity, but we are going to add the index, this extra index that we you, we added before in the last video to store the module ID that gets associated with this list item, so we can we can know which module that the player is referring to when they click on something on one of them. It's going to be in here. So the index, extra index. It's going to be the p module get id. No, how do you get the id of it? Oh, weird. It's i. We're already messing with. We're going through the list. We're we're going through the list, the entire list of all the modules. So i is going to be the module id. Super. Now I can just do this for all the players. All the players should have the same combo box drop like options for the tech. So we're adding item for each player. And that should that should do it. Let's see if we can build this. Made any mistakes. Yes we did. Data module const, fine. I do use const, it's very useful. Catches a lot of errors for me. Keeps me keeps 
be saying. Uh, it's an inconvenience sometimes, but it, that's kind of the point. You're supposed to be inconvenienced into writing good code. It doesn't violate. Like the whole point of writing object oriented code is to kind of make it easy to maintain and, and expand on later without breaking things. What's the problem? Get friendly name is not. Well, hold on. I'm not even in the errors anymore. Dude, what the hell? Seriously, man. Missing type. The wood? Oh. Whoa. What am I doing? Silly boy. Undefined type. That's fine. Understandable. The metagame GUI doesn't have data modules. I'm surprised that preset man doesn't include data modules. Oh well, header might not. the rest of it. I usually just compile so I have the compiler button here just for the file that I'm working on so it doesn't like try to rebuild the whole project and like give me a lot of errors there elsewhere based on maybe if I've changed the header it you know it'll throw errors and if there's an error in the header it'll throw errors everywhere on all the other things that were affected by the change in the header and that can just throw me off so I just like to hit the C++ file that I'm working on and then do compile only on that and that will give me there is in the header and in the C++ file only so that helps keep me sane too right. see what we got in here this is gonna be interesting if I gotta work out oh. whoa look at that yes beautiful I love it. I probably want to have it set a default straight from the beginning, but yeah, look at this. It's working perfectly. Dummy coalition, even though it says dummy tech, and it's not picking up the stuff I don't want. White bots. Wow, interesting. Yeah, undead, Ronin. Very fun. Broncos. It's a little. It's a bit of a shame that I don't have enough space here. I guess I could get make the whole menu wider. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. I might do that later as a polishing thing, but at least this is working. And we can set an AI to be like, you know, the undead or something. So the F2 coalition. Two coalition guys fighting against dummy and an undead. Or one coalition human and one dummy human playing as undead. That's fun. That's a fun game. Alright. So. That works. The list is not populated. I want to get it to set a uh, default. So I'm probably just going to have it select the first one, I think. Maybe I'll do first, second, fourth. <laughs> That's fun. <coughs> Maybe not. Maybe just. Uh, Oh, the first one could be random. That's good. Yeah, I'll put a special one in there. Call it random. And then that's going to be what... Mmm. Mmm. I like it. Alright. Let's do that first. So, before we even go through this... Add a random... Tech choice 
I'll have to come up with a special index for that, probably a minus one or something like that. Minus one is random. Maybe the dashes in there to make it look like a special option. Let's give you the random tech. <laughs> Otherwise. Yeah. We'll see if that fits anyway. But okay, that's great. So now we have random and we want that to be selected in all these as well, so uh probably can do that before. Get the select set set select Yep, that is it. Sweet. They're all gonna get selected as the random one going to be set when the game is started. Or when the, the menu pops up. <laughs> Alright, we're coming up on a half an hour. It's going to be a good one hour video, I think. Campaign. Let's see this beauty. Random! Oh, yeah, the dashes look good too. It makes it clear that it's a special, like, okay, random is not like the random faction or a random tech. It's just like random. It's a random technology. So, super. And then all the other ones are selected or added afterwards. So we can go down, like, go brown coats, coalition. Nice. I like it. It's looking really good, guys. This drop-down had to be low gimped <laughs> and like make it short because the GUI library has a limitation. Like if something's a child of a container box, like this box is the container of everything inside, obviously. Nothing can go outside of that container box, so it won't just wouldn't draw. It would just go point and just get cut off. And it's unfortunate, but this will work. Now we have the new scroll bars that are actually useful. We can kind of finagle it. White pots. Yes, this is great. Dummy collision. Random. Alright, well let's... This will actually make... Just because we have the GUI widget doing what we want, it doesn't actually affect anything yet. So, random, random, random. I like the look of that though, it's looks great. Technology. Yeah. Super. So you set the team, you set the technology. And even the team here, like the team icons can be added to. It's all data driven as well, so you can add your own like little team icons, make a little smiley face or whatever, and that is your team icon. And you can be on the same team as your friends, you know, and then you could have different <coughs> different text though, while you're in the same team. That's kinda neat, so you like the coalition guy and the dummy guy in the same team. It's like in the lines versus the evil evil AI guys who are also in an alliance. You know, dummy. Oh he's he's affiliated with the Ronin the undead. Let's say. Yeah. That's fun. That's the makings of a fun game right there. Make it a little larger. And also they, I don't know if you noticed, but the, um, the game size here, it's kind of interesting, I, or I think it's fun, but even if you max it out the largest, it doesn't use all the sites. It'll only use a subset of the total sites loaded. So every game is gonna be different. Even if you have two large games, not only are, is it a subset of the total, it's, so it's gonna be different. Like some scenes are you're gonna get to play on in this game, but not the next. Uh, but it's also randomized, you know, the order they're, they're, they show 
they get shown to you. I mean, I'm going to have another video that goes through the actual gameplay of the metagame and just uh, walk through of it to kind of explain how it works. But as you'll see, like when you start a game, it doesn't just show all the sites. It only shows like four first, depending on how many players you start with too. Like if it's only two players, only start out with two sites to explore at first. And then I think it's after a couple of rounds, it'll show an, another one that you can fight over. And then it'll keep revealing new sites until there's no more, you know, like that as was set by the, uh, by the starting, you know, here. So like this, it starts, it started with showing four, even though we had a game size of nine, and then it'll keep revealing new sites until we get to nine, and then it won't reveal anymore. And that's kind of what you're stuck fighting over, those nine, nine sites in this game. Nine should be a lot, though. I mean, that's quite, quite a big game. That's why it is the largest type. I mean, for four players, if you have six sites, that's still a lot, I think. So a small game. I mean, that could be a substantial game, so just considering that there's four players in there. And when I say players, I mean AI included. So that's how this works. Um, the slider doesn't go, you know, a game size isn't necessarily large. And I actually got this idea from, from um, the heck was that game? Uh, it's a card game. Dominion is the name of the game. It's a card board, you know, the physical board uh, card game. It's not a board game. And uh, in there too, you'd only select a subset of the cards available in the game for each new, new game session. And uh, that makes it very interesting because every new game session is going to be very different because you have like different things that can happen they can just possibly happen in that session because you only selected a subset of of all the cards total so it mixes things up makes it more replayable and a lot more fun so anyway let's let's finish this video off the last we have about 20 more minutes to make these actually have an impact on the on the game now so like okay if someone selects coalition what does that mean when you start the game and right now it doesn't start doesn't have any effect because we don't have any code, any logic to actually handle that selection. So let's do that. So that is going to be handled. So this is pretty much done. I'm very happy with the way that looks. Tech, very good. All my string manipulation magic worked out really well here. Hmm. I believe I might have save all loadouts to file. That's from before. I use these little bookmarks to like highlight where I wanted to edit code. And yeah, that's actually in the game now. I, I since the last video, I've I've made a um, done some work. So the loadouts, meaning the the presets in the buy menu, are now working. Like they they get saved to disk every time you make a change in that, and it's individual for each player. So you can actually set up these elaborate you know like I want this ship and this guy and these weapons with that guy in the buy menu and it's the preset is um, is saved before it just got reset every game and that just kind of made it pointless to even spend time on that but now it's saved and so you can have your own like little loadout saved and uh, use them with just one click which is very handy it makes the game a lot more interesting. You can actually set up like interesting tactics where you have, you know, like a, like a turret loadout and just plop down some turrets and then immediately go back to some offensive actors with uh, with weapons and stuff and just switch between the two very easily. Well, before you had to like took like ten clicks to even make that change. Now it's just one, always. Handle events. Where was I again? Okay, so buy menu, not meta game GUI. This is it. Do we have any more update player setup? I think this is it. Yeah, so player setup is that menu. So we were just messing around with the initialization before, and now it's going to be the actual updating of it, and that's where it updates. You know, like oh, we don't even have enough humans to start a game. <laughs> if there's no humans. It'd be cool to have the AI play against the AI and might try to, you know, experiment with that later, but for now, it needs to be at least one human. 
in at least two players, having just one player total AI or not, wouldn't be a very fun game playing with yourself. Cortex Command Solitaire. That would be kind of sad. So, this is where the logic of. Or is it? Isn't it start game? There should be a start game one. Oops. Start game. Starting again. I think that's it. This is where the good stuff happens. Yep. This is exactly where we want to be. Create the meta players based on the settings in the dialog box. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And of course, we needed that bookmark up here. Silly. So we need these player text select ones. Start again. Chosen team icon. Okay, teams. I'm still messing with teams here. And then native groups. Okay, this is where. Set a starting funds number. Hmm. Yeah, that's actually another thing that's not in that menu at all is this exact thing. Letting letting uh, the players set like what their starting funds should be. It could be a good setting. Now it's just hard coded and that's what we don't want eventually. I mean eventually we want everything to be data driven, so this is a no-no, like having an actual number in C++ code is, I mean, if you're a Puritan, you can like enforce that no numbers whatsoever and everything is like either a define or, or read from data. But while you're developing, I mean, it's nice to have placeholder stuff like this in there. Anyway, we got these. So this is iterating through the list of players. So we're not gonna have to do this like duplicitous thing. Player is the index name, yeah. Great. So this is gonna be get. Okay, so first of all, I always like starting like before I write code, you know, write a like snippet of code, I always write my intention in the comment. So get and it clears my head and like focuses me on what I actually want to accomplish in the logic of the of the C++ so get the tech selection and apply it to the meta game meta player so get selected item perfect Item. Oh snap, how am I going to do a random one? I'll have to randomly, I have to go grab all those? No, I'm not going to grab the modules again, so I'm going to just select a random one from the list. Yes. Okay, get tech item and tech item. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just, come on. GUI list. No. Item. Yes. 
so. Yeah. He said that the that index is negative. I could just do the zero, but either way it could fail pretty well. Extra index is zero, then select another one. So I'm gonna select one from this list. Um Range, Rand, okay. and select Rand. I think I have a function for that. Yeah, of course, I'm awesome. <laughs> I'm sorry. Get list panel, get item <laughs> get item listing signature size so that's if there's three in there and the size is going to be three, but the highest index is going to be two. So you start counting on zero. So we want size two minus one minus one. Hang on a minute. Uh, I'm so tired. Size. Brain fart. This is inclusive or not? That's the question, right? Whoa. Stop it. Both inclusive. Say so one, two. Say so it is three. This is going to return three. But two is the biggest one, so yeah, we want to go minus one here. Size select brand. And we're starting with one. We don't we the zero is the random one, remember, so it's not no, and if that's the case, I'm just going to do this. Get selected item. Yeah, it's the. Okay, selection, selected index. The zero is the the first one is the uh, random. There's two ways to figure out whether it was a random selection or not. It's the, either if it's the first one or if it's the extra index was negative. But I think this is more consistent if we are checking if we're going to be relying on that first one being the first one. Then let's make this code consistently dependent on that signal, so to speak. Select so like rand one to whatever the size is. Okay. So we have select randomly selected one of them. We are now going to actually make that selection. Select or set selected index. Boom. Excellent. Now we can have the same logic to handle. You know, um, since we now made change that selection, we might as well get this tech item. Oops. We need to get this tech item updated actually, since we made a new selection. Because below we can just handle it as if, you know, whether the random thing happened or not, this blood code will be the same and the logic will be the same. Now, set the 
select the tech module index as what the player what woof woof at what as what the Where's the player? New player. Sets. Attack. What is this? Module ID? Yeah, that's what I'm interested. We need to go to data module. Actually, meta player. And here I actually have, I'm gonna make some changes here. This is a just kind of placeholder, native pricing, whatever. This is not interesting anymore, or it's not. The module that would have the native pricing for this player. It's gonna be just an int. Properly. Okay, if my attack module is going to be z if zero, then everything is negative, maybe? We'll see. My negative one, everything is? I don't know. Zero is the base dot RT, so. for this player. <clears throat> I need to get the accessors in there. But we have direct access, so we don't need to mess with accessors. Native tech module, right? Close. Extra index 
that should do it. Really? Oh, okay. So now we communicated to the, the game that we're setting up that this new player that we're creating, we're assigning, you know, the, the name and the, with the type and, and uh, the team, and then it's going to be the tech selection. So random selection, just one of the listed loaded text. So that's going to select something randomly from, and now it selects, it actually communicates that right here. It sets that, and then that new player gets pushed back, pushed, pushed into the uh, players, the stack of players, or, you know, the vector probably of players here of the meta man, the meta manager, meta game manager, in other words players push back push back new player and that's it gets copied in there so this setting will get copied in there and it gets copied because I did not forget to do this assignment in the well, yeah. well this is probably not even used if it's it's not a deep copy so the copy constructor is going to handle that Anyway, a minute, man. Where were we? Okay, so now we've communicated that, but that still doesn't affect the game yet. We can want it to affect the game by letting Lua. Yes, we're gonna have to native tech module. Now we actually might need a. So we need to get offensive budget. Where is that aggressiveness? <laughs> That's insanity. Just writing that comment is, yeah. It's not even. I know, basically. Module, my favorite typo. Get me a tech module, and now we'll go into Lua bindings. Meta player, I think meta player is in here. Whoa, it's not. Dang it. Does that matter anything? You see, we need to make this have an effect in the game, and we already added that functionality in the in the menu, the buy menu. But we're coming up in an hour here, so I'm actually gonna break this up into two videos. This is gonna be perfect. Uh, yeah, so now we've added, we made the, uh, it's gonna build. We made the changes that we needed to make in this setup of the game, uh, the setup menu. Took us an hour to do. And uh, that will then have an effect on the game eventually, but it doesn't yet, and that's what we're going to do in the next next video. And I'm going to show what I mean. Actually, I'll just show that in the next video. So, thanks for watching. If you did, still don't understand why you'd want to, but people were really enthusiastic about these videos when I posted my first one. So I guess I'll keep doing it. It's kind of fun for me too. It keeps me uh, focused a little more and. Uh, uh, when I'm doing these little sessions.
I did a few, you know, I did program some since the last video and implemented some other things. Actually, I'll show you that right now. That's what I'll do. Uh, I mentioned it already, but this now works where, you know, and, and you notice that this is not the default setup that usually, that was hard coded before. That was in the C++, like, oh, there's a clone and he has like, a, you know, the submachine gun and, and a digger and that's it. And that's like just set. But now this is governed by here in presets you have this and this this is the first thing that was in there and that gets loaded by default but we can we can you know I clear this out and set a new you know like on a dropship or like a different rocket and do you know the a drone and you know drop some tools in there whatever doesn't matter a bomb or two doesn't matter presets we save that boom that's now in here and that when I hit save that got saved to disk so that gets saved into uh, base um, base at RTE and it's in loadouts loadouts for play one notice this drone medium scanner time to explode this is exactly what we just did in the game because it just saved it out immediately as soon as you make a change in here if you delete something clear you will notice that that file has been updated. So, uh, and it's immediate change. You'll never lose changes this way. Even if the game just crashes and burns, all your loadouts will always be saved, even if you didn't finish your game session or whatever. So, uh, kind of neat. I can, you know, and that's the whole point of this is I can click this and just jump between the different loadouts and like, okay, I'm gonna one of those and immediately want one of those. And so now the dropship landed, and now my rocket came down. So you can really kind of deploy cool strategies. Oh, does this guy have like all that inventory now? That's weird. Um, that's an interesting I, concept. I didn't realize that when, <laughs> when crabs get loaded with things, what happens if I kill it? Can I kill that guy? Can't really do that with team. Oh, you can. Actually, you can, because with... I'm going over the hour now, but... Uh, yes, he had all that stuff inside him. Fun. So, anti-personnel mine, timed explosive, timed explosive. I don't even know how this thing works. Oh, it's beeping. It's beeping. It's going faster. It's going to blow. <laughs> that sound is ridiculous. <laughs> Ah, fun stuff. Okay, so the uh, the the caveat we did with the team. So these human guys can walk through each other, but and that's all well and good. But we made so that the the crabs, meaning crabs and dreadnoughts and all those things, those actually do collide still. So you can't shoot past your crabs and stuff. So like when these guys, this guy cannot, or this guy jumps down behind him, he cannot, I'll show you actually. Look at this. Okay, so they're gonna start advancing on me. You'll see that these two can totally be next to each other and so on, but they cannot run past the crab. And we did it that way because the crabs are kind of like big and, and uh, they're hard to like, shoot around but it also makes it a little more fair because otherwise you can just stack a bunch of crabs on top of each other like a bunch of dreadnoughts and they become completely unstoppable it's just uh, kinda of ridiculous so <laughs> they're having problems getting through my little crater loosen up the ground under it he'll make it though this guy is about to kill me so uh, and um oh finish me up yeah so yeah, someone mentioned like, oh, that flashing is is too much, but I think it's very appropriate. Like, that flashing only happens when your brain is getting shot at, and that you're about to die. Like, your your game is about to get over, you know. And I think that's it's still appropriate. I mean, that's kind of like you getting shot, and so that should really seem like it's hurting. Yeah, yeah, I know that brains don't actually have pain receptors, and you know all that jazz but at least it's gonna feel like you're having a seizure when you get shot I'm sure in the in the in the brain you know like I, I think that will have an effect on your consciousness so uh, that's kinda what we're going for there
and I don't think the effect is too strong. So anyway, that's an hour and six minutes. So I'm gonna wrap up this video and then we can uh, go on to making this have, you know, the, the actual selection that you made in the, in the metagame have an effect. So the effect will be twofold. It'll be that whatever you made a selection, it, that will always be open like by default here. That option will always be open by default. And it will also make these prices will remain the same and in, in your native tech, in your native technology. However, if you go and like, oh, I wanted some dummy stuff and this will be ridiculously expensive. It'll be like maybe twice as much or something like that. Um, there'll be a multiplier. So if you if you want to go outside your native tech and like kind of go into the black market and buy some dummy tech, uh, if you're a coalition, for example, native, and then you want to go buy some dummy, dummy like, you know, like you think the impulse can is really awesome and then you want to go and buy that, you can buy it, but it'll be really expensive. So that'll be the effect. So we're going to be working in this menu again to finish off what I set out to do with the technologies and, and how that's going to work. So it'll be fun. We'll do that in the next video. So with, without further ado, I'm going to cut this. Thanks guys for watching and see you in the next one.